All right, uh, Randy Abbott here, host of the Wellness Hour. We're doing our, you know, in 18 years, uh, Dr. Leibowitz, Howard Leibowitz, uh, a medical doctor, had him on the show. I think I met him 15 years ago. And uh, he has, uh, would you call it an integrated medicine clinic? Functional yeah, medicine clinic? I would say clinic? alternative, alternative, integrative. Anti-aging? Anti-aging, Now, I met him 18 medicine. years ago. And you can't see him standing up, but he's physically fit. And I told him, and I even told his front desk, he hasn't aged in the last 17, 18 years. So he's obviously walking his talk. We're here to do some ozone therapy, uh, which I know very little bit about. And, and, and I told him in advance, I was gonna go out of my way not to research this so we could have a conversation about it and, uh, and let people know. But here in uh, Santa Monica area, people from all over uh, LA, all over Santa Monica are coming in for these treatments. It, it is the celebrity people that are in the know, the celebrities come here to, to look and feel their best. Uh, we can't mention their names, but you know who they are. So, uh, uh, Howard, so what are we doing? So you're so, hooking me up here? Um, you know, a lot of what we do with ozone, there's, there's a number of different things that ozone is very beneficial for. We use it as an anti-aging treatment because when we're doing what's called high-dose ozone, which has only been done for about the last year and a half, and this was introduced to us by a doctor from Austria, a guy named Lahadni, uh, we used to only do one bottle treatments, and the whole treatment would be over in 10 minutes. This guy, Lahadni, started experimenting with higher and higher doses of ozone, and he actually got up to, he went over 10 bottles, but he found that the, the sweet spot for maximum benefit of ozone therapy is at 10 bottles. So now we have what is called Lahadni's high-dose ozone treatment, which is a 10-bottle treatment, and you'll see how we do the bottles. We're going to do blood exchange. And the benefits to this, when you start to get up into that higher doses, is you actually start to mobilize your stem cells. And you can literally mobilize stem cells from the bone marrow that then circulate through your blood, and you'll get a benefit for weeks and weeks. I mean, are you killing off some of the bad bugs? Well, there's, there that's, well? that's what this, this, you're getting a little ahead of me because that's okay. something else that we do. The preventative and anti aging effect isn't really killing off bugs and things like that. It's basically mobilizing your immune system and mobilizing your stem cells. And so this is for well people who want to stay well and they, they want to stay healthy because your, your bodies are constantly being barraged, bombarded with viruses and bacteria and even cancer cells. So our immune system does what we call surveillance. The immune system is always checking your body, killing things off, protecting you. And when something happens, where your immune system gets stressed or you get stressed and your immune system gets suppressed, then a virus gets to take hold or a bacteria gets to take hold or a cancer cell gets to take hold and you start the process down the road of a disease. So one of the benefits of doing this is to activate and mobilize your immune system to keep you more robustly healthy and prevent you from getting down one of those Roads. And some people come in here and get this like once a week. Well, the people who get this once a week are people who are really treating for an illness. Okay. The people who are coming in for prevention, what I call prevention or anti-aging, they'll do this maybe two or three times a year. Okay. And it, it's enough to keep their immune system robust. I also have people who will come in and do this, like for instance, if they're getting on a long airplane flight, and you know how being exposed to all those germs in an airplane. I have people who will come here for a treatment before they get on an airplane, so they don't get sick and then they come here after they come home from the flight so that they don't get sick because it, it jacks up your immune system and it helps you fight things off. So it's very, very preventative. Do people, I mean, am I going to feel it today? Like, I already feel pretty good. Yeah. Am I going to feel something today? Well, the, the types of things well people feel from this is they often feel energized. Their brain feels more clear because one of the things that happens with when we mix the gas with your blood is your body gets saturated with oxygen. So, and oxygen is a very healing anti-inflammatory type of uh, medicinal anyway. So a lot of people feel very energized after a treatment. And I have people who will come in for a treatment, they'll get three bottles, five bottles, whatever, and then they go work out at the gym because they can work out harder. Interesting, okay. And they clear out lactate easier and things like that. I've treated professional athletes, I've treated boxers, I've treated cyclists, I've treated weightlifters. And they'll do these treatments to actually help them work, train harder and lift heavier weight. Now, what I like that you told me in the in your reception area, you because you were in the ER, right, for many years at Cedars-Sinai, and uh, 
you said you've ne I, said, I said what what's this ozone thing? I mean why do you like it so much <laughs> and I'm paraphrasing slightly but you said because you've never seen anything get people better like this yeah I've never seen I've never seen a medicinal treatment and this is not medicinal but I've never even seen a medicinal treatment work this fast so the beauty with ozone you know, is cancer you have people that have had stage four cancer yeah that give this credit for helping them reverse it my, my most famous case that I personally have had and I'm in a chat group with doctors who are doing ozone all around the world I mean you have to realize ozone is not something new okay. ozone's been around for over a hundred years we used to use ozone before penicillin was discovered okay. and it was the only way that was used to treat bacterial infections so if you got sick in 1900 and you got in the hospital with pneumonia you would have gotten ozone why they, they stop it? They There's didn't have no any money antibiotics. In? Well, the antibiotics got discovered, okay. and everybody said, gee, you know, we could take a pill. Why do with ozone treatment? And, and it fell out of favor. It, it just wasn't considered stylish. It wasn't considered modern. But in a few countries, Russia, Austria, Germany, they never gave it up. And they've always done it. And now what we're seeing, you may have heard about superbugs, yeah. where these bacteria are getting resistant to every, every antibiotic but nothing is resistant to ozone. So ozone kills bugs, kills germs, kills viruses, kills bacteria, and kills cancer cells, and simultaneously upregulates your immune system. So you have like a double whammy effect. So autoimmune di diseases, things like that. Autoimmune diseases respond to this uh, very, very well. Inflammatory conditions in general. I mean, one of the things um, that I experienced personally is I came in, I was coming down with a virus or a flu. And I came in, I asked my nurse to start an IV on me, give me a treatment. And then she left because she had other things she had to do. So I had to run the machine myself. And at the end of my treatment, I had to reach up here and turn this valve off. I had been suffering from uh, biceps tendonitis, from lifting weights. I had really sore shoulder yeah. for six weeks. Couldn't get rid of it. I reach up here to turn the valve off and the pain's gone. While I'm sitting on the bed, the pain disappeared and never came back. That's how anti-inflammatory is. So when you talk about things happening fast, it's incredible. I treat people with shingles. Have you ever yeah. had shingles? No, I've known people with shingles. It's nasty. It's nasty. It's a herpes. And it shortens the time of it. One day. Is that right? One day. I knock One out day. shingles. It seems like that they would uh, have a press conference about this. <laughs> Well, shingles breaks shingles out. shingles is big business for the drug companies. Drug companies don't like this stuff. They don't like this stuff because it makes them look bad, and it can replace a lot of medication. You know, when you get a shingles outbreak, you're going to go to the doctor. He's going to give you prednisone, which is an anti-inflammatory, which suppresses your immune system, and he's going to give you something like Zovirax, okay. an antivirus medication. And it's not going to get rid of the shingles. It's going to slow down the course of the shingles. But you're going to get a rash, a nasty rash. It breaks out. It often mm -hmm. follows the ribs. And things like this and it lasts for weeks and then after the rash is gone a lot of people get what's called post herpetic neuralgia which is terrible pain just because the nerve you've seen people that damage but you've seen people you've given ozone to so and it <coughs> I have this away. lady this lady came in I do a lot of hormone work as you know this woman comes in and we're sitting and we're talking about her hormones and then she says to me oh dr. Leibowitz by the way I have a rash could you take a look at it for me and I take a look at her chest over here, and I could tell immediately she's breaking out with shingles. She didn't know what it was, but I caught it early, and I said to her, you know, you're lucky. Come on in here. Let me give you an ozone treatment. I give her an ozone treatment. I call her back the next day. Gone. It's gone. Gone in one day. This is normally a condition that could last wow. six, eight weeks. Gone in one day. So. I have always been amazed by, by this. My most famous case that I was going to tell you about is the woman with cancer. She's probably 52 or 53 years old. She went to the doctor. She wasn't feeling well. She's in menopause. She was never on hormones. They diagnosed her with metastatic stage 4, which is the worst type metastatic breast cancer. Is in the ribs, is in the pelvis, is in her liver. The doctor was going to offer her chemo. He said to her, maybe you'll live another two or three months. Wow. But, you know, the chance of the chemo working is probably less than 10%. Her daughter was in the pharmaceutical business, and she decided she didn't want to go the pharmaceutical route. So she researched, found me, brought her in here, and we started giving her ozone. I was giving her four bottles, just four bottles, because 
gets more expensive the more bottles we have to do. Mm -hmm. So she was doing four bottles, but twice a week, very, very religiously. She went back to the oncologist at 16 weeks. It was like a month after she, the doctor thought she wasn't going to live. And they repeated her PET scan, which is a head-to-toe mm -hmm. body scan to see if there's any cancer cells anyplace. And the radiologist calls the doctor and he goes, you sent me the wrong patient. Because he put up her, her first scan, which showed the cancer, and he put up the follow-up scan after she had 16 weeks of ozone. And he thought it was a different patient because there was no cancer on the follow-up scan. That is interesting. And that's amazing. I mean, I didn't that expect that. I didn't expect that. I actually could never have said that that was going to happen. in your chats with ozone people across the country, right? Have, are you hearing similar stories like yeah, this? Yes, I hear stories like this. I mean, I'm in a group of doctors literally all over the world. Uh, there's doctors I communicate in Spain, doctors in Cuba, Austria, Germany. It can't hurt to do it in combination with their therapy, with no. their chemo or whatever. No. See, you know, it does I, work. It does I've work been well. I've been medical doctors for the last 18 years, and one of the things they tell me off camera uh, is that when you get cancer, I mean, you're thinking about saying goodbye to your relatives. You're distraught, and you are you feel like that and everybody's coming around giving you advice but you also they have told me that you feel like that if you don't do this treatment you're going to die you're dead so it's tough to there's only a, a small percentage maybe the whole foods crowd and even those people that would look for these so-called alternative yeah, therapies yeah, i agree but you know so when, it's just getting the word out that, when you're giving a thing? choice of a chemo that may work maybe 10 percent, that's a pretty low success rate a lot of those people will opt for something alternative. And this woman was very, How very How you lucky. reach out to these cancer patients? There's it's difficult because it's difficult. I can't say that ozone cures cancer. Right. I can't make a statement like that. Even though I have one really great anecdotal case, you know, you need studies, you need yeah. double blind, yeah, okay. you need all that stuff. I can't make a statement like that. So you have to be very careful with it. But you have seen miracles here in this practice. I have. People that felt lousy and now they feel great. And I treat People Lyme that, disease what patients. What about brain fog, things like that? That's, it helps that stuff. It helps myelo, uh, you know, um, dysplasia. It helps fibromyalgia. It helps all sorts of autoimmune diseases. Okay. Uh, a lot of viral, chronic viruses it helps. Uh, Epstein-Barr, chronic fatigue, a lot of those types of viruses. And my Lyme patients, I have a number of Lyme patients who do very, very well with this. I have HIV patients who are doing well with this. I have HIV patients who won't take any chemotherapeutic medication. And, like and they're actually maintaining and being very stable doing ozone and then they do herbs and vitamins and supplements and a healthy diet and detoxification and their disease is not progressing. So there's a lot of benefits, healthy benefits without side effects. The beauty of ozone compared to a lot of pharmaceuticals is all pharmaceuticals you know have a negative, they have a downside, they have a side effect. And ozone is side effect free. It's got a lot of upside potential. So the main thing is it's a big boost to the immune system. That's, that's the big and, way and, that and it works. And some of it, you guys don't even know the mechanism of why it works so well? There are some components of when we treat different diseases, yeah. why it works, we're not even really that sure. Okay. Now, now by the way, you're watching uh, the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're on location today in Santa Monica. We're here with uh, you know well-known, world-renowned uh, medical doctor, Dr. Howard Leibowitz. I'm about to do an ozone treatment. And what <laughs> I'd like to do, I was thinking about this today, that I'd like to uh, maybe segment this. We'll talk about the different things that you're treating um uh, maybe a little bit about lyme a little bit about you know osteoporosis things like that yeah so well, what are we about to do so this is i'm gonna you... start an iv okay so here hold on to that yeah, good vein really good vein you lift weights huh that's right <laughs> yeah all right so, we're gonna so are, are most of your patients that are coming in for this already healthy or it's all lousy. over the map, and okay. a lot of my patients aren't healthy. And you know, some of my patients have uh, cancer, prostate cancer. Okay, you ready? Where's the bad part? Oh boy, well, that's good. The worst is over. All right, I'm just gonna tape it in. How many years younger am I going to look after this? <laughs> That's the key to this whole thing. You look like a child. <laughs> look like a child. <laughs> and, 
And so they come in, takes about 45 minutes? Yeah. Um, each bottle you'll see when we start doing the passes, each bottle is called a pass. And we're going to take some blood out. It's going to go up into this bottle. You'll see it going up the tubing now. Do a little squeezing of that ball. Now this is a solution as a blood thinner called heparin. I dilute it with saline. And we have to put it in each bottle. Otherwise, the blood would clot, and I wouldn't be able to return the blood to you. So you get a little bit of heparin on each pass. I just put it into the syringe here. You don't feel it or anything. So heparin is a blood thinner. Yeah, but you okay. have to be careful after getting a treatment because <coughs> if you get injured or if you do a sport <coughs> or any kind of activity where you could get injured, you could potentially just bleed. Just stay away from anything. You could bleed a little more like a hemophiliac temporarily. It wears off in about three, four hours. Okay. But uh, you wouldn't go to the boxing gym, you know, don't do Taekwondo, you know, try not to fall down the stairs, things like that. All right, all right. <laughs> but here we are, basically, we're just collecting blood. Uh, Randy has a tourniquet on his arm. He's squeezing this ball. Uh, the blood is going up. The, the machine here that this tubing is connected to creates a vacuum uh, right here. And this is an automatic machine. This is actually one of the best ozone machines you can get. It comes from Germany. Um, and uh, it creates a vacuum through this line, and the vacuum pressure allows the blood to come up into the bottle. And then you'll see after we fill the bottle about three quarters of the way up, I reverse the process, and the machine then will generate ozone. It's connected to oxygen right here, and from the oxygen, the machine generates ozone, and then the ozone gets pumped into the, through this tube into the bottle, and I swirl the blood, mix it with the gas, and then you get ozonated blood back into your body. And then we go back and forth. And I may feel something while this is happening? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people feel, they feel like their brain is more clear, they feel sharp, they feel energetic. And it can be lasting. Like, I may feel good for the next three months, Yeah. possibly. Yeah, it kind of tapers off. I mean, mm -hmm. the, you'll feel the best this week. Um, and then kind of the effect, but the, the effect of your immune system can last longer, but you may not feel that part. Interesting. So we're just waiting for the bottle to fill here. Now, the thing about ozone is ozone is a natural gas. You've heard about the ozone layer. Yeah. And the ozone layer is a layer of gas that's way up high in the atmosphere, and it actually protects the Earth. It protects the Earth from damaging solar rays and things like that. And then if you think about it, where does ozone come from naturally? Well, it comes from lightning cracking through the atmosphere and interacting with oxygen. And it cleaves off one of the oxygen molecules and it makes an unstable O3 from a stable O2. And that unstable one oxygen on the three is what's readily given off from the three because it's very unstable. And that's what causes all the effect in the body. So we're doing exactly what the lightning does in the atmosphere with the oxygen. We're pumping oxygen into this machine, and the machine sends electrons through the oxygen, creates ozone, it gets stored up in a chamber in the machine, and then we can pump that gas out and mix it with your blood. Now, there's a stem cell component to this. Is there <coughs> or not? So when we get up to 10 bottles, because you'll see we can go back and forth multiple times and fill multiple bottles, when we get up to eight to 10 bottles, and this is what this Dr. Lahadny developed in Austria, he found that at that level, you can start to mobilize your stem cells from your bone marrow. And that's where we see, I'm gonna start giving this back to you now. Okay. So I'm gonna open the tourniquet. You can relax your hand here. Okay. And now I'm gonna start pumping gas into the bottle. Now the machine is pumping gas into the bottle and the blood is now going back to Randy, reversing the process. But he's getting back now his blood that's being mixed with ozone. So you have to shake it a little bit. You have to mix is that it. why you, you mix yeah, it? Okay. We have to mix it so that the gas gets into the blood cells. And if you notice, his blood starts out kind of dark. That's normal venous blood. And when we saturate it with oxygen and ozone, it should get brighter and brighter red. Okay. And, and we'll know over bottle after bottle, it'll start to show that. Now, you have uh, a large practice. 
you do a lot of, uh, of nutrition, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy or hormone optimization as you call it, that, uh, but you say 40% of your practice is Ozo. Yeah, is Ozone, it a word of mouth thing? I mean, are people telling their friends about it? It's mostly word of mouth. I think, you know, when people get phenomenal results, they, they talk about it. It's like you go to a great restaurant, you go to a great movie, you, you talk about it because it's, it's, it's very exciting. I mean, it does sound a little gimmicky sometimes, you know, ozone, but, but I, I have orthopedic surgeons. I have friends that are, you know, injecting ozone into, you know, knees and, and shoulders uh, in dentistry. For people it's with big uh, in dentistry, they're injecting. It kills the bad bugs exactly. in the mouth. Exactly makes the gums exactly. healthy. And it, exactly. So when you offered to do this, so now this me, bottle's almost empty, and I'm going to reverse the process again. Now I'm going to go back to vacuum, vacuum mode, and oh, we're going to put we're going to put the tourniquet back on. Is it new on. blood? You think so you've gotten one bottle? But do you think it's new blood? I mean, is it new blood? Well, yeah, I mean, you're getting because, brand new blood. Well, your blood's not going to stay in your arm. Yeah, no, I, I got to pump the blood in. It's goes, you're pulling it out, but then you're going back in, so it's circulating. Yeah. It, it, it gets all mixed. It's a dumb question. And now we're going to get some more blood and, and bring it back up. Now, I'll give you another little bit of a blood thinner. So to do this, so and I'm going to hire you can, those. Where's your ball? Oh, I put it right over here. <laughs> Just slow squeezing. Like every 10 seconds or so. Okay. It just helps the circulation a little bit. Now we're filling the bottle again, and we're starting what's called the second pass. It's the second pass. So you already gotten a, a bottle of ozone. How do you feel? I do feel kind of alert. I feel good. <laughs> you feel better already? I do feel a little bit better already. <laughs> uh, so but you felt good to begin with. So. so with Lyme disease, let's talk about Lyme disease for a moment. How is this helping Lyme disease? <coughs> what are your thoughts? Well, Lyme is a fairly complicated disease because there are multiple organisms that tend to run with the, you know, the, the parasite that causes Lyme disease from the, uh, from the um, tick bite. And a lot of doctors don't believe that. A lot of doctors feel like it's one organism and you just give antibiotics and then you get rid of that one organism and the person's supposed to get better from Lyme disease. But a lot of my patients, especially if you talk to patients who have chronic Lyme disease, they don't get better after their antibiotic treatment. And they stay on antibiotics sometimes three or four weeks, sometimes longer, six weeks sometimes, and they don't get better. Why aren't they getting better? We should have treated the bug, it should be gone, mm -hmm. but there's other organisms that are in there that people are saying don't exist, but when you do uh, immune testing and antibody testing, you can find them. And when you give Lyme patients ozone, it's kind of a panacea treatment. It doesn't target one organism. It's basically boosting your immune system and it's helping you fight everything off. So Lyme patients generally get Does this make better. you produce more white blood cells? It doesn't directly um, hit the white blood cells, but it helps what we call helper T cells, okay. which is one subfraction of the white blood cells that does come out of the bone marrow. And this has been measurable because I work in a clinic um, where we measure the helper T cells after two high dose ozone treatments. High dose ozone treatments are about 10 bottles each. And we have documented 40 to 60% rise after two treatments of helper T cells. That's dramatic. Is it? That's very dramatic. And that's what we think is really having a big impact on fighting these diseases. So if it works, like you say, look, you've been in medicine you can relax for, now, yeah. for many, many years, and you say it's the best thing you've ever seen as far as helping people. Do you foresee this as uh, becoming a uh, mainstream someday? I would hope it becomes mainstream. Years. I would. Ho I don't think it should take that long. You know, this is not like I said before. This is not a new treatment. This has been around a hundred years. There have been hundreds and hundreds of thousands of treatments of ozone all over the world. Why this isn't becoming mainstream is really beyond my imagination. I don't know why. It's safe. It's beneficial. It's not that expensive. It's not that expensive, right. And, and it, there's no downside to it. And you can cure people. Literally, I've cured people in one day from illnesses that they suffer from for weeks and months. So let's talk about fibromyalgia. So this unexplained full body pain. Or, uh, have you worked with any people with fibromyalgia? Yeah, I've worked with fibromyalgia and other autoimmune diseases. And I've been told by some doctors that's very tricky and almost impossible to take care of. Some doctors believe, have told me, it may be in their head, it might be psychological. Um, 
So what are your thoughts and, and what are you seeing? Fibromyalgia, I, I think, becomes what we call a wastebasket diagnosis. In other words, you work people up, people come in, they have aches, they have pains, they have fatigue. They have a lot of vague, what we call non -con vague constitutional symptoms. You can't find anything to make a specific diagnosis. So based on the symptoms, a lot of doctors will just say, I can't find, really, I can't find anything wrong with you. It must be fibromyalgia. Well, if it is fibromyalgia, I think it's an autoimmune process. And if it's an autoimmune process, it's going to respond to this. We're just finishing the second bottle. I'm going to go back up. So you've had people in here that had fibromyalgia, and it's helped them. I've had a number of people with fibromyalgia that it helps. It definitely helps them with their energy because a lot of people with fibromyalgia have a lot of fatigue issues and they feel awful all the time. So it decreases inflammation and it helps with the pain and it helps with the energy. But I had a patient just recently, a young woman who came to me and wanted treatment for fibromyalgia and talking to her, it didn't seem like she really had fibromyalgia I mean, make a long story short, I worked up, she had Lyme disease. Nobody ever tested her for Lyme disease. The good news is, this helps both. So, so from going from complete exhaustion all the time, having some symptoms to feeling good. Yeah, they get better little by little. I don't know if you can notice on the camera now, but his blood is actually brighter red. It is bright red. Yeah. And this happens little by little over the course of the treatment because your body's now going to start to get more and more saturated with oxygen. Okay, good. Which is going to be very healing. So for people that want to think better, think clearer, let's say I'm giving a big presentation the next day. This is good for that, right? Yeah, this is great for the brain. It's also been shown to be very effective and helpful after some incidents, like after a heart attack. Because, you know, when you have a heart attack, part of your heart isn't getting the blood supply that it used to. And the brain after a stroke. So we don't do it right after because there could still be some bleeding issues and things like that, and we're using an anticoagulant. But a week or two later, after things have calmed down and healed, it's a good time to start getting ozone. It's also very good to help heal after surgery. I had back surgery a year and a half ago, and I came in here and I had my nurse start my ozone treatments, and I was doing 10 bottle ozone treatments two, three times a week. And I was, I was actually so healed I, was, I had my surgery in December, and after New Year's, which was like three or four weeks later, I was skiing. Okay. My surgeon couldn't believe it. He absolutely couldn't believe it. But it, it produces healing that fast. Are other medical doctors sending you uh, patients? Yes. As a matter of fact, um, they're usually in the realm of alternative medicine doctors, but alternative medicine doctors appreciate the benefits of ozone, and they often integrate it with other modalities that they're doing. So patients will come in, they're on herbs, or they're getting uh, different types of vitamin treatments or vitamin infusions. They're on special diets. So you do all that too. And Here. I do all that too. Uh, but but this to blows integrate it away. This, this is the with best. the ozone, this takes it all to a whole nother level. A whole nother level. Um, and you know, just the speed of healing that I see, which is the most amazing. Just incredible. So, so autoimmune. Okay, so uh, arthritis, uh, lupus, all the different uh, type of autoimmune problems. You, you it like can, it for that. You it say can it's great decrease, for that. It can dramatically decrease the inflammation. Dramatically decreases inflammation. And that's one of the benefits. So people have a lot of pain. They have stiffness, a lot of joint pains, inflammation, redness, all that. And you can see it go down almost immediately. I had a woman here who had this very strange rash on her hands. Uh, I didn't know what it was. They didn't know what it was. She went to a dermatologist. They'd worked her up. Nobody knew what it was. Of course, when the dermatologist doesn't know what to do, they put you on steroids. That's an anti-inflammatory. So I said to her, I said, I didn't know what it is. I said, but let's try a treatment. So I brought her in here, hooked her up. I gave her four bottles. At the end of four bottles, while she's sitting here on the table, we looked at her hands the rash was 75% gone in 20 minutes. It's amazing to me. I get, I, I get surprised all the time because many times I, I have a patient and we're treating them with something and I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I'm really not sure. Yeah. But because it's so safe, I can say to them, let's try it. 
let's just try it and see what happens. And I surprise myself all the time with the benefits. Well, I don't know if it's a placebo, but I'm feeling very clear right now too. But my back, I was moving back and forth. I told you, I injured my lower back. I was doing some deadlifts. Uh, guy in the gym, he's yelling at me, come on, Ray, you never do deadlifts. So I did some, of course, messed up my back. And I don't feel anything right now. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, well, is that common? I mean, could it? Yes, I, have, I had a patient here who comes up from Miami. So just oxygenating the blood. Well, it, it oxygenates the blood, but it also dramatically decreases inflammation. Okay. And inflammation causes pain. So you get two benefits. It kills bugs, kills viruses, kills bacteria, kills cancer cells, decreases inflammation, oxygenates the blood, and, and helps with pain and inflammation. So there's so many benefits so, to it. So let's just, so if I have a virus right now, everybody has something going on in them at one point. So let's say I have viruses in here. How is it, and help me understand this, how is, is this killing those bad bugs? Or if there's cancer cells in me right now, how is it killing those cells? Is it just making my <coughs> immune system fight those better? Or is it the ozone, the oxygen that kills those things there, because those diseases don't like oxygen? Yes, cancer grows in typically in an oxygen poor environment. That's okay. what helps that cancer right? cells okay. to grow. So when you saturate the body with oxygen like that, that's one reason that can slow down the growth of cancer. That won't necessarily kill the cancer cells, but that can suppress them from rapidly dividing and rapidly growing. So that's one component. The second component would be the boost that you get to your immune system. So on the one hand, you're suppressing the growth of the, of the bacteria, the virus, or the cancer cell. And then simultaneously, while you're suppressing it, you're also boosting your immune system to come in and attack it. Hmm. So you're hitting those organisms and cells from two different components simultaneously. And, and you're not poisoning your body while you're doing it, which a lot of chemotherapeutic drugs and pharmaceuticals, even antibiotics, do is they actually suppress your immune system. All the drugs that are used for autoimmune you know, suppresses your immune system. A lot of people who have been on chronic immunosuppressive treatment for an autoimmune disease, they often get another illness later down the road. I know a man, he was a good friend of mine, he had a kidney transplant, and they kept him on an autoimmune suppression course, they had to, because otherwise his body would have rejected the kidney. What do you think he ended up dying of? He had cancer because he had no immune system to fight the cancer off. This would have been great for him. This would have been great for him. So is this one of those things, because look, I mean, everybody, no matter what profession you're in, you get excited about something, right? And you end up telling all your buddies about it or whatever. Do you find yourself doing that? Like telling your circle of friends, like, you gotta do this. Well, I talk about ozone all the time. All the time. All the time. Because I hear a lot of my friends will talk to me and they'll be complaining of something. And I say, let's, Let's give you some ozone. We'll usually get you better. I'll give you a great story. I have a girlfriend who's a doctor, and she's, she runs an urgent care clinic, and she's really good. She's really smart. You know, she's been an ER doctor for 30 years, and she knows everything, and she's phenomenal. She's really a top doctor, and she gets the worst bronchitis I've ever seen, and it takes her out, and she usually gets it twice a winter. And she is so sick, and she typically goes on um, steroids, antibiotics, all the inhalers, and she suffers and suffers. So this has been going on for many, many years. Years and years. A couple and years. times a year. Yeah. So I first start dating her. She comes down with one of these bronchitis episodes, and I say to her, "You got to come to my office. I'm going to give you ozone, get rid of it." She poo pooed it. She goes, Are you kidding? She goes, I would never do that. She's so traditional. She's like straight arrow traditional. Okay, this goes on, it goes on. So, you, so, so, so she didn't accept it at first. She probably told all of her friends, dating this new guy, and he's into this ozone. I think he's crazy. She wouldn't even tell her friends. <laughs> she wouldn't even tell her friends. She wouldn't talk about this. She thought it was just insane that I was doing this. Anyway, to make a long story short, we've been dating for years now. This bronchitis thing happens twice a year. Finally, I convinced her to come in. I gave her a treatment. Lo and behold, the next day, she's better. Normally, she's sick for six weeks. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. six weeks sick. 
So I say to her, well, what do you think of your ozone treatment? So she's very skeptical. She goes, well, there might be something to it. There might be something because to it. Because you got it early on, early. right when it started, exactly. her bronchitis. Exactly. So then she was thinking, well, maybe it wasn't bronchitis but she's never up. gotten rid of it before. It's never stopped. Once it starts, it's a progressive downhill course. So it's done. Course. So she, didn't, she hasn't gotten it? Anyway, I've done this now three or four times. I catch it early, and I stop it dead in its tracks. Now... She gets bronchitis. She calls me up. She says, can I come in for an ozone treatment? I'm the first person she calls when she starts to get sick. So she's done a 180 degree turnaround. Interesting. So she, now look, she's in urgent care. So she, it, I guess she's insurance based. Probably tough for her to tell those patients. Yeah. But she refers you people. Well, it's her, so, her circle of she's so now. traditional. It's hard for her to refer for an alternative right. treatment. You know, and unfortunately, this is not FDA approved and all that's not sanctioned by the government or anything. They, they poo-poo it and, you know, they prevent a lot of doctors from offering it to their patients. Where is it being used most in the world? In Europe. In Europe. It's big in Europe. If you went to the do a doctor in Germany or Austria and you walked in and said, I think I'm coming down with the flu, he wouldn't take out the prescription pad. He'd hook you up to this. Really? That's what you'd get treated with. And, you, and the next day you'd be better. So somebody, they're going on vacation, they feel some flu-like symptoms coming on, cold, come in here and do this, wipe it out. Yeah. I had a, another uh, patient. She's a public defender. <coughs> very, very busy. Works her ass off. I see her once or twice a year for hormones. She calls me up and she says that she's had this terrible flu. It's been going on for six weeks. She's been on every antibiotic under the sun because every time she goes back to her doctor and she's not getting better, he just puts her on another antibiotic. He has no idea what he's treating. And most likely, she has a virus, which isn't going to respond to antibiotics anyway. So what he's doing when he gives her the antibiotics is he's basically suppressing her immune system. She's so sick. She comes in here, fever, coughing, everything. She has to go to work. She goes to work even though she's sick because she has a huge caseload and she can't stay home. I give her one of these treatments, she goes home, I call her up the next day, she goes, I can't believe it. She goes, this is a miracle. She goes, I'm afraid to even admit it, but I am 90% better in one day. She goes, I want another treatment, just to make sure. I want, I want the first treatment got me better, but now I want her insurance policy, because I don't want to relapse. She comes in, I give her a second treatment. She says she went home, she felt awfully tired, she slept for two hours, and she woke up, and she was all better in two days. She'd been suffering for six weeks. And these stories are just typical. No I mean, medicine. This is, this no is what you see all the time here. Very typical. Now, this machine that you have, because there might, you know, other doctors are doing ozone here and there, dabbling in it, whatever. Um, why is this machine better well, than some of the cheaper machines? There are a few modalities for ozone therapy. There's what's called major autohemotherapy. It's abbreviated MAH. <clears throat> There's hyperbaric ozone, which is what we're doing right now, because this is being given to you under pressure. Okay. And then there's also what's called DIV, direct IV ozone, where you just start an IV line and you literally push the gas very, very, very slowly, a little bit at a time, directly into the vein. We only use that modality for patients who have very bad veins, and we can't. You have great veins, so we could start a nice big IV line, and we can move a lot of blood back and forth. This is the best way to do it. Okay. But... You can get confused with these other modalities of ozone because some of the other modalities won't get the results that you'll get with a hyperbaric machine. This is a hyperbaric machine, meaning so look for it hyperbaric increases hyperbaric ozone. Hyperbaric, in, ozone. hyperbaric uh, ozone. Hyperbaric ozone. And that's always being injected into the body. It's being mixed. Your ozone is yeah. not going into your body directly. It's being mixed with your blood, blood up in this bottle, and then the blood is being returned to you. You're getting back a bottle of ozonated blood. Each bottle, when I do a pass on these bottles, it's about 200 mLs of blood. So most adults have between six and 10 liters of blood in their body, depending on how big they are. Bigger people have more blood than smaller people. But if you have six liters or eight liters of blood, and we do 10 bottles, we could theoretically ozonate a quarter of your entire blood volume. Is it the happiest group of patients? I, I mean, you have women that come in here and they get estrogen, progesterone, thyroid, uh, other things. 
they feel good, they're happy, whatever, you take them out of their symptoms. But are the ozone patients even happier? I would say when I can cure something that someone's been suffering with for a long time, I've never seen a happier patient. Okay, good. You know, cure is a big word. Cure so, is a big word. So let's, so, so give me some cures. Like well, what? the big cure is my, my stage four metastatic breast cancer okay. patient. Okay. When she called me up on the phone, when she got her PET scan result, I, I couldn't understand what she was saying because she was screaming so loud into the phone. Can you imagine having had a death sentence that's reversed like that? Is your take that, that uh, it's probably better not to take this in combination of chemo and radiation, that it may interfere with the benefits of the ozone? Well, you want to, I would, I would prefer to do this in conjunction with the oncologist because I wouldn't want to interfere with their treat, if right, right, right. With the treatment schedule. But you can do it in conjunction, yes. And, and I think it would work very, very well because one of the things about chemotherapy and radiation is it suppresses your immune system again, a lot of these treatments. That's how it kills the cancer and it kills your immune system. So people will get a lot of complications and side effects. They get another infection, they get another illness because their immune system has been knocked out. So what I can do in between those treatments is I can boost and support their immune system okay. by giving them ozone so they don't get a secondary complication from the do, treatment. Do you tend to get a very, well, I'm sure you do, a sophisticated group of people that come in here as far as their knowledge about nutrition, their knowledge about uh, longevity? Uh, <laughs> they're more, yes, they're, they're the people who are doing their own homework. Um, most of my patients who come here, they're self-referred. They basically have read on the internet about ozone, and then they do a Google search, and they look for an ozone practitioner. But there are different types of ozone. Is there an ozone you should stay away from that's out there being marketed? Um, there are people doing what we call the major autohemotherapy. This is a whole different treatment where the blood comes out of your body by gravity. It's like when you're donating blood and it goes into a bag that they actually lay on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then they take ozone out of a machine, not a machine like this, in a syringe, and they inject it into the bag. And then they mix it and they hang it and they drip it back to you. That is not going to be very effective. And that could potentially give this a bad name because a lot of people confuse the two. And this is hyperbaric ozone, and that's called major autohemotherapy. So and it's not your, as effective. Since 40% of your practice is ozone right now, people coming in, is it more, what's the percentage of the prevention crowd, like me, and what percentage is the people that are sick? I would say the prevention crowd is the smallest. I would say maybe 10%. So you'd love to see more of those people? Well, th that would be great for them. Um, actually, I get a tremendous amount of satisfaction helping people get better from illnesses. So, so no more antibiotics? Is that possible? Well, we, so, it so, is so, possible. So, so let's say somebody that gets uh, a urinary tract infection or, 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 or different problems women, women get, right? Or bad colds. And, they, you know, and, and I guess since you're dealing with a lot of people in the know, they know that these, that these uh, antibiotics are killing all the a lot of the good bacteria in their in their gut. Well, you know so, taking antibiotics kills your gut, right? So can you have to take this probiotics. work just as good in your opinion? This could be just as good. I think the key is really picking it up early. Early diagnosis, picking it up early. If once an infection gets established and it becomes a big infection, it would be harder to get control of it with this. But if we can pick it up early and knock it out in the early stages, this could be But definitely after surgeries effective. or preparing for surgeries, it can only Definitely. help. It can, it can help. And there's, there's a few other things that I've treated with this that we haven't mentioned. Have you heard of interstitial cystitis? No. Women who get an infection, it's not an infection, but they feel like they have an infection in their bladder all the time. And they don't, they don't um, get, have any bacteria. They get culture, they go to the doctor, they think they have an infection, they do cultures, no bacteria. But it feels like a bladder infection. They have to go to the bathroom every 20 minutes. Okay. I take those women, I take some ozone out of this machine, and I put a catheter in the bladder, and I just squirt the ozone directly into their bladder. And it takes a few treatments, I would say, but we heal it. Really? We heal it. I've had women, I had this one woman, a young woman, she's probably 38 years old, a lawyer. She was here. She had interstitial cystitis for years. She said she couldn't go to the movies 
because she'd have to get up and, and climb over everybody in the row to go to the bathroom so many times during the movie that people would kill her. So she doesn't go to movies. She can't go to restaurants because she has to get up and go to the bathroom so many times during the dinner. I treated her. She got better. She says she goes to the bathroom now less than her boyfriend. Okay. She's completely cured from this. This was a problem. I mean, can you imagine something like that debilitating you? So you can't go to the movies? You can't go to a restaurant from a silly little thing Does like a bladder? Does she still have to come in? She doesn't have to come in anymore. She's better. She's all better. So it's ant anti viral antifungal it's not e this things? wasn't even bacterial no, no, but i'm saying though in general yeah so whatever this was an anti-inflammatory right now this was an inflammation okay. problem and we cured an inflammation problem i have a young man right now who has a rectal fissure you know what those no. are it's like a, it's like a it. chronic paper cut in the rectum it's very painful as you can imagine like every time you try to have bowel movement or anything the only known treatment for that right now is surgery. They actually have to go in, cut out some tissue, sew it together, and all that. It's, it's nasty surgery. I'm treating him with rectal ozone. Same thing as the bladder. I put in a little catheter in his bottom, and we inject the ozone. He holds the ozone in his colon 15 minutes. We do this a couple times a week. It's getting better. It's getting better. Pain's getting better. So early, you're early in the treatment with that guy? We're very early in the treatment, and, and the goal with him, but he's already getting better after three treatments, and the goal is to avoid surgery. He can avoid surgery and not have to have rectal surgery, which is very debilitating. There's so many things, and we do inject it in joints, like you were talking about. It's called prolozone. So you do that, too. So you inject yep. shoulders... Knees. <coughs> we can put it into knees, joy. I put it into ankles. Is that something you don't do very often? Or? It's not as common as the blood treatments, but I, I have done it. I've done it with patients. And you know what else is a great combination? I don't actually do the PRP, but you probably have talked to doctors that yeah. do the PRP. Yeah. You can mix PRP with ozone when you're doing the injection into the joint, or you can mix ozone with stem cells when you're injecting them into the joints. It's used in veterinarian medicine routinely. In racehorses, they've been getting ozone for years, and it's legal okay. in animals. Now, uh, you know, I, I hear a lot of things over the last 18 years with the television show. And, and then when I get excited about something, I'll tell one of my medical doctor friends or whatever. In fact, I told you about something earlier, and you said, well, what's the research? Where are they getting it from? So are there published, if in Europe they're using this, are there pub a lot of published articles about this? There are lots of published articles. The problem with ozone, like a lot of alternative medicine treatments, is it's never been studied in what's called a double-blind controlled study. But there's hundreds of thousands of, of anecdotal cases, like my cases. And there are doctors all over the world who can talk about patients and their results. They're called case reports. Mm -hmm. So case reports are valuable. I mean, you can publish case reports in medical journals. They're interested in reading about something. I would love to publish the case of this woman with the metastatic breast cancer um, so, so, and get so it into way, a medical a, journal. This is a natural remedy, and I guess when you look at the big picture, there's not a lot of people that are going to fund a study on right. a natural And there's remedy. nobody who can, who can get a patent, and there's nobody who can make a lot of money out of this. This is like a mom and pop kind of operation treatment. So it's hard to get the money together to do a big study unless you have a university or some academic institution that just is curious about but why this works. that's how most things are. You know, it starts out with, a, with, with a, a bunch of anecdotal stories, clinical anecdotal stories, and then it gets big and big and big, and then uh, somebody decides, I guess, to fund a study about it. But it seems like it'd be easy enough to take 30 people, for example, that are going through a cancer treatment, uh, a similar cancer treatment. And then 15 of them are doing this, and 15 of them are just doing the regular treatment. Or, or a pain study or something. It seems it would like be, that would be easy to do. You know, the hard part is telling, getting the people who don't want to do the traditional treatment. Yeah. And getting them to agree to but just I guess do that, this. So what you would have to do is fake them out with a placebo and pretend as if you're putting the ozone in their blood, and they're not. So you're just putting their own blood back into them. So I've had 10, I'm about to get 10 of these bottles. We're, we're doing ozone therapy. Uh, from a special ozone machine, hyperbaric. They're not all the same. Hyperbaric. Okay, that's the one you want. Look. So what's what? What can I expect now for the next three hours? Uh, anything I should avoid? 
obviously well the only thing is like that. <clears throat> because we had to do the blood thinner you have to be careful not to get bruised or injured because okay. you might bleed a little more for a few hours I have to be careful about that some patients will notice because we manipulated your blood back and forth and it goes in a bottle sometimes the red blood cells break up a little bit and the hemoglobin inside the red blood cells gets through the kidneys. Red blood cells shouldn't go through the kidneys. So the urine sometimes, very rare actually, maybe 3% of the people this will happen. But if you see brownish or reddish colored urine, don't worry about that. Okay. It's not a problem. Drink a lot of water, flush the kidneys, and that clears up in two or three hours. Should not be a problem. Other than that, you can pretty much do anything you want. Um, a lot of people, when they get a treatment, they actually feel so good they go out and exercise because they can exercise more aggressively and longer and recover faster and feel better from the exercise. So they actually can get a bigger benefit from the exercise because they can actually lift heavier weights or they can run faster or hike further and all sorts of things like that. So when you, do you have an RN normally doing this or you're always doing it like you're doing it here with me? I do, I do all the treatments just like okay. I'm doing it for you. So are you going over nutritional counseling, over health education when you're with patients here? <coughs> well, the thing that's interesting is because I'm sitting here interacting with the patients for this amount of time, I really get to know my patients very, very well. And we sometimes get into medical problems that they didn't otherwise think of as being something we should discuss. And I've actually made some very interesting diagnoses by talking to people while we're working out, you know, the ozone treatment. One of the things that this is very interesting that I've discovered is there's a big interaction between Lyme disease and hormones. Because Lyme disease, there's a theory that the Lyme organisms cause toxins that can damage the hypothalamic pituitary axis in the brain. And I do a lot of hormone work, as you know. I've been doing hormones since 2005. So I'm in the special category where I can be giving somebody an ozone treatment for their Lyme disease, and I can pick up on some problems that may be related to their hormones, and then I can help them with their hormones and do the Lyme disease treatment together. And I've helped a number of my patients with this, and I've gotten a lot of people better because sometimes the symptoms that people have from Lyme disease is not necessarily from the Lyme disease. It's actually the deficiency of hormones that are caused by the Lyme disease. So by oh. replacing the hormones and correcting the hormone imbalance, a lot of these patients who have chronic Lyme, they feel so much better because their symptoms are coming from a hormone deficiency, not just from the Lyme disease. So I can actually balance both, both areas for people. Are there a lot of people with Lyme? It's so common, it's really? incredible. I see more and more Lyme all the time. And now it's become one of those illnesses where when you talk to patients who have this fatigue, malaise, you're not really sure what's going on with them, muscle soreness, joint pain, foggy brain, they're kind of nondescript symptoms. It's like the first thing I think of is get a Lyme test. And I'm finding Lyme all so over So you the have place. found Lyme just by having conversations in this room. They take a test, they have Lyme. Either that treat. or I have patients who get referred to me for a treatment for something else and we actually determined that what they're really suffering from is Lyme disease. It wasn't the original diagnosis. Especially patients with fatigue and the fibromyalgia uh, symptoms. They're very similar. What kind of patient would you like to see more of here getting this ozone? Well, ozone is great for everybody. So it runs a high spectrum from prevention, like for you, anti-aging and prevention, all the way up to cancer patients. And I've treated many cancer patients. I've treated Lyme disease patients. I have HIV patients. I have hepatitis C patients, hepatitis B patients. Any patients with chronic illness, any patient who doesn't seem to be getting better with traditional medicine should consider doing some ozone because ozone is going to help boost their immune system. So let's talk about hepatitis uh, and, and, and people like that. What's your take on this for them? Like hepatitis C? Yeah. Well, hepatitis C luckily now has a treatment. Okay. It's very expensive. But what happens with uh, ozone and hepatitis C is the hepatitis C virus can damage the liver. And you can have a very chronically damaged liver. And if you can do ozone, like I've treated ozone patients 
I mean, I've treated hepatitis C patients with ozone before the drugs were invented, and we actually protected their liver from getting chronic damage. So it can be very preventative, even though it may not completely cure the illness, it can actually be very preventative in terms of preventing other side effects and complications from an illness, like hepatitis C, which often leads to cirrhosis and many times even liver cancer. HIV patients can benefit from this. I have an HIV patient I, I'm, I'm treating now. We're keeping her viral load very stable on no medications. She doesn't want to take the medications because they're so toxic. Like once a week comes in here? Yeah, she comes in once a week. Like three bottles? We do know we're doing eight to ten bottles every week. And she actually has not, she's had HIV now for many years. She says she has never felt this good. Now, you, you know, look. Aging gracefully, we'll, we'll talk about the prevention crowd, uh, you know, even though it's not natural to take testosterone or estrogen, progesterone, but, but you take it because you're able to. It's like a, a hacking your system. It's a cheat. You can live longer, feel better by taking these medications. So for the, the, like the athletes, the triathletes, would you, it, it seems like if this is going to give you that temporary bump, it's natural, why not do this before a big race? Or it's a great, it's a great, it's a great idea because this is not detectable as a performance enhancement. My hunches they're probably substance. doing it now, right? I think so. But I think you, people are doing this. I think this is a way. It's almost like blood doping, but it's even better because blood doping gives you red blood cells. This is going to saturate your body with oxygen and boost your stem cells. So the damage that's going to be caused from a race, which does racing and that stressful athletic endeavor will cause oxidative damage to your body, joints, muscles, heart, whatever. This can repair that. So before and after. And you could recover much faster. You recover much faster and be able to get back to training after a hard race or a hard workout. You can get back much faster. But that's one of the things you said earlier, that people report to you that they have a better workout. Yeah. You can. I mean, I've had patients who've done these treatments and literally go from my office to the gym and they lift 30 percent heavier weight in the, you know, within that hour. They'll go with, within that hour just because their body's so saturated with oxygen. They can actually lift heavier weights. Now, look, I know your age. You look a lot younger than than your age. It seems like if I were you, I'd be doing this all the time, like once a week. I know. Or something. I don't have a nurse who can come in and start my IVs. If I if I did, I would. But you've done it about three times. I've done, yeah, I've, I've probably done a half a dozen treatments on okay. myself okay. in the last couple of years. Because it requires you to have somebody in your office helping you out right. while right. it's doing it. The, uh, no, I feel good. I feel clear. This is our last, last bottle. So I got the full dose. Uh, we're on location here with Dr. Leibowitz. So the FDA, what do they think about this? They, they don't like it. So they, they have opinions they about this. It. Yeah, and they won't sanction it. They won't approve it. Um, but they don't come out and say anything negative about it, do they? <coughs> they will. They will cause a problem if you get complaints, if you hurt somebody with it. So they're neutral like on that. it. They just don't talk about it. Yeah, I mean. But there's really no bad press out there about it. Like it's not going to grow cancers. It's not going to there are, grow you, tumors. It, it's no, not, it, I mean, it won't there's do no anything rumors like about that. that. There are some people who have been reported to have had bad outcomes from it. And it's usually due to operator error. The doctor did something wrong with the procedure and hurt somebody with it. The ozone gas itself is safe and, and harmless. And it's been around, like I said, 100 years. And there have been hundreds and hundreds of thousands of treatments. It's probably, there's probably more known about ozone than any pharmaceutical as being a safe, having a safe track record and being beneficial. In World War I, it was used to treat gangrene in war wounds. It was all they had. And it, it does a great job on wounds. Like, I've treated people that have wounds, like, on their arms or legs. And basically what we do is we put a, we put a bag over the extremity, and you put a little tube in there, and you pump the ozone gas, and you fill the bag up like a big balloon. And you just let them sit with the gas. I did this with my mother. She's passed now, but she was in her 90s. And she had this tissue paper skin, and it just wouldn't heal. And we would bag her arm and do these treatments, and literally in two days I could heal up a wound in her. It, it was like Star Wars. 
like they would pass a wand over the arm and you, look, you watch the wound close up while you're looking at it. It was almost that fast. So do you look at this as the, like, the complete package, like optimizing your hormones, eating correctly, and doing ozone as, and getting people to sleep again? <laughs> I think if you could afford to do ozone on a regular basis, I think doing two ozone treatments a year would be part of an optimal anti-aging package. Getting your hormones balanced, eating correctly, getting enough rest and sleep, avoiding toxins, and of course, um, getting enough exercise. I actually have my booklet. I don't know if you saw it in the waiting room. That's part of my five-step ultimate health plan. I call it the ready plan. The ready. <laughs> and part of it is, is what I call oxidative medicine. Oxidative medicine, decreasing inflammation, detoxification, a healthy diet, exercise, and replacing hormones. The R is for replacing hormones, E is for exercise. The two Ds are detoxification and, um, and replacing, I mean, getting enough exercise and decreasing inflammation. Okay, good, so somebody wants to make an appointment for you, they just go to your website, call your office, and correct. get in here. That's okay, correct. Good. Yeah.